Hi there. Today, I'm going to show you one way you can easily create a mini map in your Phaser 3 game by using the built in Phaser 3 camera. In this demo, we will see how we can create a mini map by using a secondary camera in our Phaser scene. And we'll see how we can use the built in Phaser 3 game objects to have those render out to our mini map, but then not actually show up in our main uh, camera in our scene. We will also see how we can dynamically update our mini map by having our an icon that represents our player move around the map. And we'll see how we can have dynamic icons like this quest icon here that we'll go ahead and remove once the player completes their quest. So before we get started with our code, we will quickly go over what a mini map is. And so at a high level, a mini map is just another view of the game that is presented to the player. And typically uh, this could be like a bird's eye view of the whole level or world. And it is used to display additional information to the player. So mini maps in your game uh, can vary depending on the type of game that you're trying to build. And it can also vary depending on what kind of information you want to display to your player at various times throughout your game. It also vary depending on the art style and what you're looking to achieve in the mini map that you're showing to your end player. And so on my screen here, we can see various examples from a variety of different games and what their mini maps look like to the player in the game. So as always, there are multiple ways to do things. And in this video, we will see one example of how we can create one type of dynamic mini map by using a phaser three camera. So before we get started, if you'd like to follow along in the code, there will be a link to the starting source code for this example in the description of this video. Let's get started. So before we start adding new code, we're going to quickly review the starting code that was provided in the example. Uh, so quickly, in main.js, this is our main configuration for our phaser 3 game. And then our game scene.js file has our core phaser scene uh, that we'll use in our game. So then in our scene, what we're doing is we're loading in our assets and our animation configurations. And then once we do that in our create method, we're creating a simple background, which will be our town that we can see in our demo. We're creating our player, which is a sprite game object. And then we're updating our camera to follow our player as we move around our level. And after that, we just add some components that we've added to our main player, which are going to allow our player to move around our scene as we listen for our keyboard input uh, with our arrow keys. After that, we just have some comment out code that has a few examples of some of the things that we're going to need to do uh, in our level. Uh, so if we go ahead and start our uh, starting code template, what we should see here is we should see this town scene here with some static NPCs, and we go ahead and have our main character move around our level. So now that we've finished reviewing our starting code, we're going to go ahead and start building on our mini map. And so for this example, we're going to go ahead and use a phaser three camera to go ahead and create our mini map in our scene. Uh, so in your phaser three scenes, you have the option to have one or more cameras in your scene, and they can each be used to render out different things. And so that's what we'll be using as the basis for our mini map here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new camera that's going to go ahead and display our whole world, our whole level uh, to the player. And so currently, if we move around our scene, we'll see that our world is much bigger than what's actually visible to our player. And so we'll be creating a camera that's going to have this whole level in the view of it so that we can see everything that's currently happening uh, in our game. All right, so go ahead and do this uh, in our code, in our create method. Uh, there's going to be a to-do uh, between these lines of code for starting of the camera mini map. Let's go ahead and remove the to-do. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make our camera. So to create a camera, we'll make a new variable to store it. I'm just going to call this minimap camera. And to add a new camera, we need to reference our cameras manager. And then we're going to go ahead and use the add method to create a brand new camera. So with our camera, it's like any other game object. So we need to provide a position of where we want that camera to be at in our scene. Uh, typically, it's in 0, 0 in the top left corner. And we go ahead and render out what's ever visible to the player. And so for this camera, we want to go ahead and have it render out in our top right hand corner here. And so to go ahead and do that, we're going to go ahead and reference our scale on our uh, current scene. And we're going to go ahead and grab our width property. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract 230 pixels. So then that way, it's going to bump us over to around here uh, for where our camera is going to go ahead and start. So for our Y property, we're just going to go ahead and come down 10 pixels. So then that way we have a little bit of padding around our mini map and our main scene here. Once we do that, we now need to go ahead and provide our width and our height of our camera uh, for what's going to be visible. And so for our mini map, we want to go ahead and use our whole level. And so we're going to go ahead and grab our whole width and height and apply that to our camera. And so to do that, we're going to do this. We'll grab our scale again and we're going to grab our width. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by our scale factor. And we're going to come back to that in one second. And now for our height, we want to go ahead and do the same thing, but we want to reference our height property on our scale manager. And we'll also go ahead and multiply that by our scale factor. 
And then so real quick, uh, for make main, we're going to ahead and set this equal to false. And basically what this does is it says, hey, this is a secondary camera in our scene. It's not our main camera. Uh, so phaser has some built-in logic that will apply to your main camera. Then also has some built-in methods that reference the main camera. We just want to make sure that this one stays secondary. So we're going to explicitly say this is false. Lastly, you can go ahead and provide a name for your camera if you like. And it's a default of an empty string. But we're just going to go ahead and add in minimap. So then that way we know what camera this is. So back to our scale factor, what's happening in our current scene is right now our game size is 688 by 544 for our canvas size. But in addition to that, what we're doing is for all the game objects that we're adding in our scene, we are scaling them by two so that that way our characters appear larger and it's just it's a, a better view for our game. Uh, so as an example, if I don't scale up our background and our characters, we'll see that our town is very small. It's a little bit harder to see. And so we're scaling this uh, by that factor. All right, so once we add our camera, if we come over to our scene, we should see this overlaid image inside our map here. And so if we start moving our character around, it'll be very evident that there's something there. And so what's happening right now is we're showing our camera in this position that we specified, and it's showing the whole scene. And so then that's why this image is as large as it is. As large as it is. And so what we want to go ahead and do with our camera, now we want to go ahead and modify our zoom factor of it, which will zoom our camera out. And that's going to give us that bird's eye view. And it's going to make our level look a lot smaller, but we'll be able to see everything that's happening for that camera. And so what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and call our set zoom. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to apply this to be 0 0.16. And that way it's very small. Now what's going to happen is our camera is going to be moved and we're not going to see it. And what's happening is our camera, like our other game objects, has an origin. And by uh, default, it's in the center of our uh, game object. And so as we set our zoom, what's going to happen is our size of our object is going to shrink. But because of our positioning and our size here, our camera is slowly going to go in this direction. And what we want to do is we actually want to bring our camera back up here where we specified. And so to control that, we're just going to go ahead and use the origin on our camera and we'll do zero. So then that way it's in the top left hand corner for our game object. And now no matter what our zoom size is, our camera will appear in that position. And so as an example, if I bump this to like 0 0.5, we'll see here we stay in that top corner. But now our camera is much larger because we're showing more to the player. All right, so then with that, now what we've achieved is now we have this nice looking mini map that's basically a clone of our main scene and we can see everything that's happening. And so if we look closely, we can see that our main character is being rendered to our secondary camera and we can see it moving around the scene here. And so for the next thing we're going to do for our camera is we're going to go ahead and modify this so then that way we don't actually see our player character animate across our camera. We're actually going to have this be represented as a static icon that will go ahead and move around our map. And with that icon, we're just going to go ahead and do a basic red circle so that way we can actually see it. So to go ahead and do this, uh, we need to go ahead and create our game object. And so what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to do const. We're going to call this player icon. And then what we'll do is we'll set this equal to this dot add and we'll do circle. And so for our circle, we want to go ahead and use our player's X and Y position for positioning this. Next, we're going to provide a radius. And so we're going to go ahead and do 20 for our radius. And now we're going to provide a color. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just do red. And that way it'll stand out uh, against our background. And for our fill alpha, we'll go ahead and do one so it's fully visible. And now we want to go ahead and update our origin. And so for our origin, we're going to do zero and we'll do negative one. And so once we do that, we should see our circle game object show up in our scene. And it's also up in our main camera, our mini map camera up here. So this works really well for having our game objects show up in our mini map, but we don't actually want this icon to show in our main camera. So what we can do now is on our cameras, they have an ignore method that allows us to provide game objects that we don't want to actually render out to that camera. And so by doing that, we'll be able to ignore our player from our mini map and we can ignore our icon for our main camera. Uh, so as an example, what we're gonna do is we'll do our mini map camera we're going to go ahead and use the ignore method. And now we can provide our game objects that we want to ignore. And so we're going to go ahead and ignore our player uh, for our mini map and then for our main camera. So if we do this, we do our cameras, grab our main camera, let's do our ignore method. And now we're going to go ahead and ignore our player icon. 
So now we'll have it when our scene refreshes, we'll see now our player is visible in our main camera, but not in our mini map. And our icon is only visible up here. So the next thing we'll need to do is now we need to actually have our icon move when our player moves. And so for our code example, uh, for one of our components, we have a mechanism to listen for when our player finishes moving and we can grab those coordinates. Uh, so in our create method, we have this example here where we're using the phaser event emitter to know after our player moves. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this code here. We're gonna come down here. And after our player moves, uh, we're gonna go ahead and update our player icons position. So we're just gonna uncomment this code. And so if we do a console log real quick, what we'll see is that our player moves, we'll get our X or Y position of where our player game object is. So then what we can do is on our player icon, we can do set position and we'll go ahead and do player.x, player.y. So if we go ahead and save, we should now see that our game object is now moving as our player moves, and we can see that representation uh, in our mini map. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do for our mini map is we're gonna work on adding some dynamic icons that we can add and remove uh, that will represent quest in our game. Uh, so currently in our example, uh, under our assets folder, under data, we have this quest JSON file. And basically this represents an array of quest objects that where our player, if they went in our game, they'd be able to pick up a quest to do something in the game. And so this is a very basic example where we just have the positioning. We don't have any other metadata, but it works for our example here. And so what we'd want to do is with this data, we want to go ahead and add that icon to our mini map. And so then that way our player knows that if they go there, they can pick up a quest. So right now our example is already set up to load this JSON file in our preload method. And so what we can do is the code here allows us to go ahead and see what is in that JSON file. Uh, so basically after you load it, it goes into our cache and then we can reference it in our JSON uh, base cache. And then we can use the get method to provide our asset key to grab that data. So if we take a look at our console, we'll see our, our array of objects is here. And so we have our positioning and our ID for this quest. So now what we can do is by using that information, we can now create more icons to render out to our mini map. And just like we did with our player icon, we would only show them on the mini map, not on our main scene. Uh, so to go ahead and do this, uh, let's go ahead and make a new variable. We'll do const, and we're just gonna call this quest icons. We'll set that equal to an empty array. And now what we'll do is we're gonna reference our cache. Let's go ahead and go into our JSON cache. We'll use our get method, and we're gonna go ahead and look for quest. And now we're gonna go ahead and loop through each of these. We wanna go ahead and loop through our array. So we'll do a for each method. And now for for each, we will have a quest. And for our objects, now we're just gonna go ahead and do console log and we're gonna go ahead and log out our quest object. So what we should see now is we have our quest object with our positioning. And now we just need to go ahead and create an icon to represent this. And so for our quests, we're gonna go ahead and use an image instead of a circle game object. And we'll render that out to our player. All right, so now for each of our quests, let's go ahead and create our image icon. And so what we'll do is do const, let's do icon, we'll set equal to this, add image. Now we need to go ahead and use our quest X and our quest Y properties to go ahead and get our positioning. And now for our asset, we're gonna use quest icon. So what we'll do next is let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and scale these up so they're a little bit bigger. So we'll do set scale, we're gonna do 2.5, and then we need to go ahead and modify our origin. That's just in the top left, so we'll do zero. So then what we'll do for each of our images, which we're gonna push that into our quest icons array. And then that way we can use that whole array to go ahead and ignore those from our camera. So now what we can do is we can do this cameras. Let's grab our main camera we're going to ignore. And now we're going to ignore our quest icons. So we're gonna save and refresh. We'll see now on our mini map, we have this new quest icon that's visible to the player. All right, so the next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some logic to allow us to remove this from our mini map. Uh, so typically in our game, we'd have our player interact with the NPC to get a quest. And once that is done, we would remove the icon or update it. And then once the quest is complete, we'd fully remove it. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to listen for a key press so we can simulate this. And then that way we can go ahead and destroy that game object and remove it from our map. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we have some logic here listening for a key press of the letter Q on our keyboard. And so what we'll do is once this is pressed, we're just going to grab our quest icons. We're going to do four each. And we're going to loop through them and just uh, go ahead and remove those icons. And so we'll go ahead and grab our quest game object. We'll use the destroy method just to clean up the object. And because we're destroying it, that's going to remove it from our phaser scene. And that's going to go ahead and remove it uh, from our cameras as well. So if we hit the Q, we see now our game object disappears uh, from our mini map. 
All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and apply some effects to our mini map so that way it really stands out. Uh, so currently, because we're just using the same background image uh, for our secondary camera here, it really kind of blends in with the background and it makes it hard to really have it stand out. And so there's a, a number of different effects that we could do here. Uh, we're gonna do something very simple. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and have our background have uh, special effects applied to it to kind of apply a grayscale uh, by using uh, the uh, built-in shaders that are available inside Phaser. And so what this will do is it's going to have this effect here where we create this grayscale type minimap image. And then that way our colors really pop for our icons and it really stands out from our scene. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a duplicate copy of our background image here. So then that way we can apply effects to it that won't be captured on our main camera here, on our main background. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we come up to the top of our create method. We're gonna see this line of code here for our main background. Let's go ahead and copy that. We'll come back down to our camera. We'll go ahead and paste that in. And we're just gonna go ahead and name this uh, map background. And we just want to have the exact same image uh, shown to the player. So then what we're gonna do is with our map background, we're gonna go ahead and have our main camera ignore our map background. And then we'll have our mini map camera ignore our main background. So what we'll do is after our player, we're just gonna go ahead and do main background. So once we do that, our scene will refresh. It looks like nothing's changed, and that's because we're using the exact same image and we didn't do anything to it yet. So now what we can do is on our map background image, we're gonna go ahead and reference it. We're gonna use the post FX method to go ahead and apply these shaders to it and these special effects. And then we're gonna use add color matrix. And what this does, this gives us a variety of methods that we can apply to our uh, game objects. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use grayscale. And so this is going to allow us to apply a grayscale effect to our image. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do 0 0.8 uh, on our uh, map background. So now what will happen is our scene will refresh and now our mini map looks really nice uh, and it pops against our main background here. So that really stands out to the player and we can easily see our player icon and our dynamic icons we added to our map. And with those last changes, we now have a really nice mini map for our game that was built using the Phaser 3 camera game object. With the example here, you could easily extend this to add things like icons for shops, icons for NPCs. If this was an MMO, you could add icons for other players and much more. If you do end up extending this example here or have other mini map ideas that you would like to see, uh, with Phaser 3, please let me know in the comments down below. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the play source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see the links on your screen now.